Hello everyone, Zena Zuma here, and welcome back to more Let's Play. Sorry Basila, I'll talk to you soon, don't worry. Star Wars, Coder. Last time, we found out about the Star of Maps, and dealt with the Metale and Sandral dispute. Before we do, go report, we have some things to do. Uh, I don't believe it's this one, but might as well check. Nope, it's not. Wait, we have to check this? No, we can't. Thought we did. Good. What do you want? Now, Samt, don't be so rude. If it wasn't for this young Jedi, we wouldn't have met. I... I took the loss of my droid mu- But I must. I was much too attached to my droid. It was all that was left of my husband, you see. Maybe I thought that through the droid, my husband could live again. Be with me still. I think we understand. Love can do strange things to anyone. But I went too far. I could not see what was missing in living a normal life. Fortunately... Sant and I got to talking and, well, we have a lot in common. I think we'll be seeing more of each other. It's funny how things... But I think we should... Goodbye. And we want to do that for experience. And this is where Rehaja... Rehaja and I can... Not yet, my friend. Rehaja and I cannot thank... Oh, this makes me sad. Good luck. Knowing what happens to him in I'm the sorry. sequel. We are waiting before the ceremony. Hopefully... Uh, yeah, might as well just spoil it. These two die in the sequel, and it's sad, but they do, they die protecting other people. It's really sad. Ugh. Ah, you have returned, young Padawan. Have you discovered what it was that Revan and Malak sought in those ruins? <laughs> no, I could not find anything. Very clearly a lie. We should consult the Jedi archives to see if there's any mention of the Star Forge and what it might do. We must learn why Revan and Malak sought it out. Return to your ship with Bastila, and we will summon you when we are done. Padawan, you have done well in discovering the star map hidden within the ancient ruins. But there is more you must do in the battle against Malak and the Sith. We Jedi. No victory over the Sith will not come through martial might. The Council has a mission for you, Padawan. I've consulted our vast archives in an effort to discover the nature of this Star Forge. But all my efforts have been in vain. Still, the Council are in agreement. The Star Forge must be found. Revan and Malak sought it out when they began their tragic fall. The Star Forge is surely a powerful tool of the Dark Side. The star map in the ruins showed you four planets, but it was incomplete. It did not show the location of the Star Forge itself. We believe there may be similar star maps on other planets. Each star map is likely a small piece of a larger puzzle. Find the star maps on Kashyyyk, Tatooine, Manan, and Korriban, and we believe they will lead you to the Star Forge. The Jedi numbers have been ravaged by this war, by defections to Malak's cause, and by Sith assassins. But we realize the importance of this mission. Yet if we send a company of Jedi Knights with you, we would surely draw the full attention of Malak and the Sith, dooming your efforts to failure. Secrecy is our best defense against the Sith, but it would be foolish to send you on this quest without someone to aid you, young Padawan. Bastila will accompany you, for there is a powerful connection between you two. A connection that might be the key to unraveling the mysteries uncovered by Revan. And Juhani has also asked to accompany you. After long deliberation, we have granted her request. Juhani nearly fell to the dark side. Perhaps her presence will serve as a reminder to you of the dangers of that path. Of course, those who aided you on Taris will also come. They possess skills you may find useful in your quest. 
Remember that secrecy and discretion are paramount to your success. You will not be able to hide the fact that you are a Jedi, nor should you. But the true nature of your mission must not reach Malak's ears. You may return here at any time. Dantooine will be a sanctuary for you, a safe haven. Here you can find supplies and whatever advice or other aid we may give you. You can leave whenever you wish. The sooner the better. The longer you wait, the stronger Malak becomes. But first, a warning, young Padawan. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. I fear this quest to find the Star Forge could lead you down an all too familiar path. The fate of the galaxy is in your hands, young Padawan. We pray you are up to the challenge. May the Force be with you. And yes, Juhani is a member of our team. Juhani is a Jedi Guardian like us. But she's unique. First is that she's got a lot of stuff set up already. The second is if we look for our force abilities, I believe, if, I believe it's in the force abilities, or maybe it's not. Well, she has a unique force ability to her and her alone, force camouflage. In the second game, the player could get, get it, but it was mostly stuck to the player and another character. But this game, it's Juhani's only. As a Jedi Guardian, you want Juhani to be able to go on the offensive, which thankfully doesn't take too much learning to do. Juhani is also unique in a few other matters. If you guys know your Star Wars, you know that Kafar haven't really been depicted beyond this game, really. So Juhani's unique in that. However, Juhani's unique in another aspect, other than being one of the few Jedi who fell and then was redeemed, Juhani is lesbian. No, I'm not joking. The guys at LucasArts didn't know this until the game released. They were not exactly too happy about it, but what could they do? Bioware is known for having at least one key character in there. And honestly, see, this made Juhani probably more likeable because she isn't just how the new Star Wars films put it, where it's like, oh, being a gay character, but you're in the background and have no personality. She's got full flesh pa personality. She's got likes and dislikes, and she's a precious being. You have to protect her. And she's the first lesbian character in Star Wars. No joking. She is, and it's honestly really interesting. It's actually a mini, a mini plot point for a quest. Don't say. Juhani is probably my second favorite character in these games. Yeah, I like her that much. And she's got a light, her blue lightsaber back. And just so we can tell the difference between our lightsabers, I will be switching my colors. 
uh, if you guys want to know what I'm, how I'm going to make sure each lightsaber is color coded. Terra and Tatak. These things are actually annoying. We'll get to talk about them later. But we do need to go through this. Thank you. Because I do not need to talk to you. No. I'm not going to speak to her right now. I will talk to her soon. I need to talk to everyone else first. So, first, before we do, actually, before we do anything, I need to go to the, I believe this is mine. Switch it to a yellow one. Bondar. We're changing this to green, rubber, and sigil. A blue. Just so I can tell what lightsaber is which. We will get a party member that uses a green lightsaber. However, by the time they join us, I can switch the green lightsaber to a purple one. Or a red one. Or another one. I do plan on using... Saying... Having everyone have different colored lightsabers. So, don't worry. Uh, yeah, appendix done. Yeah, nothing I can do. There we go. Uh, this episode is going to be spent talking to everyone. Uh huh? Oh. Yeah, I know. Look, I'm not saying I can't go on or anything like that. It's just, it's a shock, you know. But I suppose that's why we need to stop. So don't worry about. Yeah, that's hey just there. not what I wanted to do. I want to know really? A you want to know about me? Nobody's ever really been interested in me before. What do you want to know? Big Z's my family, you know. My parents, well, I, I guess they're dead. It was just me on my own until the day I saw Zalbar in the lower city. I could tell right away he was in trouble. This was before the gang wars were out of hand. But even then, the Volkers were scum. A few of them were hassling Big Z, trying to pick a fight, but he wasn't looking for trouble. Hey, nobody said the Volkers were smart, but there were three of them, so maybe they figured they could handle him. I don't know. Anyway, I don't like the Volkers at the best of times. And when I saw them picking on this poor Wookiee, all alone on a strange planet, overwhelmed by the big city, I just lost it. I screamed out, leave him alone, you core slimes, and charged right at them. Well, one of them saw me coming and slapped me so hard he just about knocked me cold. Hey, I don't need a lecture from you. You ain't my mother. I knew what I was doing. Those Volkers didn't scare me. They're nothing but cowards. I knew how to deal with them. Of course, I never got the chance. I guess Zalbar didn't like seeing me get smacked around. He let out this howl and yanked that Volker a meter up off the ground and held him there by his throat. The other two screamed and ran off. Can't say I blame them. The first time you see an angry Wookiee up close, it isn't a pretty sight. I thought Zalbar was gonna rip that punk's arms off and beat him to death with his own fists. The Volker was so scared, he fainted. Or maybe it was Big Z's breath just knocked him out. I keep telling Zalbar to brush those choppers of his, but he never listens. Just stay up wind when he's speaking and you'll be fine. Anyway, I knew those Volkers would be back with friends, so I grabbed Zalbar and we took off. Ever since then, we've been a team. We look out for each other, you know? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You think I can't... In fact, I look out for Zalbar more than he looks out for me, you know? Big Z's a little bit too gullible to make it alone on the mean streets of the lower city. He was fleeing some kind of trouble back on Kashyyyk. That's all I know, really. Big Z doesn't like to talk about it. In case you didn't notice, he's the strong, silent type. Doesn't much matter to me, though. I accept him for what he is, not what he was. He and Zalbar like to... Live in the present. Yeah, I suppose you're right. 
Like I used to tell my brother, fast talk and slick words don't get the job done. My brother's a touchy subject, you know? It just so happens, I don't really feel like talking about him right now. Nothing personal. Let's just get back to the business at hand, okay? Hey there, what can I... Unlike everyone else, we can just talk to the patient over and over and over to get her talk about her brother. I think these might have had messed up flags. I was a little snappish when we last talked. I'm sorry about that. I get a little touchy when it comes to Griff. It's kind of embarrassing telling people about him. It's complicated. Griff wasn't the most popular guy. He had his faults. But I still loved him, you know? Sometimes people don't understand. I never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me here to Tars. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in a Starfighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? I don't know the whole story. I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves out. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. He gambled and drank, and he was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive. He showed me how to slice into a computer security system, how to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes, and how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Yeah, Griff did right by me. I really miss him since he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. He promised me he would. He fell in with a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him and off he went. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. Subject's closed as far as I'm concerned. If I'm gonna be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? Okay. Hey there. I'm sorry for the way I acted before. It's just that when it comes to Lena, I tend to get a little worked up. My brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay, until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. I'm not gonna pretend Griff wasn't a hustler and a con artist, but that doesn't mean you can just insult him. He did what he did to look out for me. I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. I saw Lena for what she really was. A busty, credit-grubbing cantina rat. She used Griff and took away the only family I had. After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were gonna try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd come back and get me. And we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. I like to point out, point out. Missions 14. This happened when she was 12. Ouch. Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Taurus, Lena sunk her claws into Griff butt good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. But part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Never mind. Okay. Yeah, what do you want? You want to hear tales of my exploits? Of the wars I've seen and fought? The enemies I've seen die by my hand? <laughs> sure, I'll humor you. My name's Candorus. 
of the Mandalorian clan Ordo. I've been fighting across the galaxy for 40 of your years. For my people, it is the honor and glory of battle that rules us. It's through combat that we prove our worth, gain renown, and make our fortunes. Win or lose, as long as the fight is worthy, then honor is gained. The glory at having triumph over impossible odds is what drives us. If there's nothing at stake, your possessions, your life, your world, then the battle's meaningless. We Mandalore take everything we are and throw it into battle. It's the true test of yourself. The battle against death, against oblivion. All life dies eventually. A true warrior is one who can beat it down whenever it raises its head. But times have changed now. The Mandalore clans have been scattered across the Outer Rim. The Republic is in decline, and the Sith Empire rises to take its place. The clans as they were aren't a threat, but the galaxy still fears us. <laughs> People think we war out of spite or bloodlust. They don't understand and fear that. We only wanted the challenge of the battle and glory from it, win or lose. And we lost. But now I have no real challenges. Crushing Davik's enemies and the pathetic gangs in the lower city of Taris could not be considered the most glorious of tasks. When I think of the battles I've fought, the thousands I've killed, the worlds I've burned, I weep for my past. We will never again speak of this. We've got work to do, so let's get to it. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, we can't find out. Your choice. We'll get to talk to him later. I believe... Yeah, we'll talk to Juhani soon. But we're going to talk to Bastila and Karf. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I want to talk to Bastila. No, not bothering me. Not exactly. There is a bond between us. I do not dispute that. Necessary, perhaps, but it is no guarantee of our success. I admit, I'm a little disturbed that such a bond could be possible in the first place. I saw your service records when you were transferred aboard the Ender Spire, but nothing beyond that. I know very little about you. I'd like to ask you some... Don't worry, these are simple... Good. Derali. Derelia. I don't remember. I know there's information on that, but I keep forgetting about it. Excellent. The current. Yes. Well, the truth is, I was studying how you responded to my questions. Your reactions helped me judge you. This was a test for me to learn more about your character. You were honest, which is good. And you treated this as a serious matter, which it is. This bond we share will shape both our destiny. But I imagine you've had enough questions. We can speak again later. Yeah, that's not too interesting. It's just more information about your character. I do. How did you know? <laughs> well, your face is all scrunched up like a canarf pup. An amusing description, but hardly the truth. We both know the real reason you have some idea of what I'm thinking. The bond we share. Why do you still try to deny the existence of this bond between I, I us? Won't. Like it or not, we are linked, as our shared vision of the star map proved. Um, our connection allows us glimpses into each other's mind. We can feel some of what the other feels, and what I feel within you troubles me. A Padawan must receive considerable training. They must learn to control their emotions and darker impulses. Often it takes years before using the Force can be considered safe. The fact that you are so strong in the Force and have had such relatively little training could have terrible consequences. For you, and for everyone around you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's uh, not a joke. The choices you make could affect both our destinies. Not to mention the fate of the Republic and the entire galaxy. There is much at stake. Thankfully, you've exhibited a degree of compassion and self-control up to this point. I sincerely hope you can maintain these traits in the future. We must nah. all resist the influence of the dark side. It's everything we are fighting against. This is doubly important for you, with your natural affinity for the Force. That's good to hear. 
Without the proper training, however, I'm afraid you will find the path difficult even with the best of intentions. There is great danger ahead for both of us. Our destinies are intertwined. Everything one of us does will have consequences for the other. Any reckless behavior on your part is likely to affect me as well. Yes, that is true. I will do my best to guide you, but I am no master. Not yet. And there are times when I find the sheer strength of your power almost overwhelming. Your power could be a gift or a curse. When you need guidance or advice or support, I will do my best to help you stay on the path of the light. I only hope I have the wisdom to help you through the dark times. But for now, okay, I don't believe I we can get any more. Then nope. I said, and then carve. Yes, what's on your mind? Me? Well, I've been a star pilot for the Republic. But with all that, I've never experienced anything like the slaughter these Sith animals can unleash. Not even the Mandalorians were that senseless. My home world was one of the first planets to fall to Malak's fleet. The Sith bombed it into submission, and there wasn't a damn thing our Republic forces could do to stop them. I'm just a soldier. I go where the fleet admirals tell me to. I follow my orders and I do my duty. It, it's just... <sighs> Doesn't seem right that doing that means I failed them. I, I didn't. Yeah, no, I... That's not what I mean. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm not making much sense, am I? You probably mean well with your questions. I'm just not accustomed to talking about my past very much. At all, actually. I'm more used to taking action. Keeping my mind focused on the business at hand. So let's just do that. If you have more questions, ask them later. Yes, what's on your mind? You got. Now, finally, before we do anything, I need to say before talking to Johanny. If you haven't figured out, yeah, I'm doing the romance route. So, and the only thing about it. Concrete is actually. I feel I must apologize for the way I acted towards you before in the grove. It was wrong of me. I am sorry for attacking you. I am sorry for thinking you would only try to kill me. I hope that by helping you in your task, I may redeem myself in your eyes and in my own. Thank you. It is most reassuring to know that you can forgive me, even though I tried to take your life. I can only hope that, in our time journeying together, I will succeed. How may I be of assistance? What is it you would like to speak to me about? I believe we can get to the second one. Uh, I, I thank you for your concern, yeah, okay. but I am still a bit shaken. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. I thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. How may I be... How I came to be a Jedi? I am sure you would not find it very interesting. Are you sure you would like to hear? Well, it goes back a number of years. Back on my homeworld, 
We did not see Jedi very often, especially where I lived. It was not the homeworld of the Cathar that I lived on. My parents had long fled from that place, and perhaps that is a story for another time. Rather, it was a human hive world that I was raised on, the hind end of space, a pit of a world, to be sure, where Jedi rarely tread. But we had heard of them. Well, everyone had, so that is not to be unexpected. Champions of truth, defenders of justice, heroes of the Republic. It was very easy for a child to be enthralled by their image, their mystique. Maybe I was one of those children. Yes, yes I did. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. I was old, and maybe a little enamored. This is a bit, she said a little. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi. To lift myself out of the rut I had been living in for years, and to make a real difference as the Jedi were. <laughs> the foolish delusions of a child, but this child made it happen. As soon as I was able, I left my world and went in search of them. I found them and was accepted. I had been living my dream on Dantooine for several years before you came, although perhaps I was not entirely ready for it, or not completely suited to the task. Otherwise, I would not have fallen. But thanks to you, I have been redeemed. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. Action is what is needed. And with that, we've only got, we can at least do a bit more. We're going to go to Tatooine. Because we do need to spend some money, sadly. And I'd rather get the money spending done early. Lord Malak, the Star Forge is operating at 200% capacity, far beyond our expectations. I am more interested in the young Jedi Bastila and her battle meditation. Have you learned how she escaped the destruction of Taris? She was aided by Karth Onasi, a decorated war hero of the Republic and a legendary soldier. During the Mandalore Wars, he was honored many times for his bravery. You know this man? Yes, Lord Malak. He served under me when I still followed the Republic. You could say I was his mentor. Interesting. How did you acquire this information, Admiral? An eyewitness, Lord Malak. Kalo Nord, a bounty hunter, was there when Bastila and Karth escaped the planet. Apparently, they left him for dead. A Jedi and a war hero. It's a wonder you survived the encounter. I am hard to kill, Lord Malak. Kahlo has agreed to help us capture the young Bastila for a very hefty fee, of course. But I assure you, he is well worth the price. His reputation as a bounty hunter is well earned. Her companions are nothing to me, Kahlo. But I desire the young Jedi taken alive, if at all possible. Lord Malak, forgive me, there is something else. May we have a private audience away from the ears of the common soldiers? I trust you are not wasting my time, Admiral Karath. I promise you will be very interested in what Kahlo has to tell you about Bastila's other companions, Lord Malak. Oh, come on! I think it's... I'm gonna stop. Okay, good. I thought it was another Torah segment. I was gonna be very angry. Very, very angry.
cave. Force has given us a, a vision, like the one we shared on Dantooine. Did you see it? Of course. You must have. The Force is strong with us both. Tatooine is known for little but blowing sand. I find it surprising that there would be a star map somewhere in its desolate wastes. The star map would likely have to be within some kind of shelter to protect it against dust and sandstorms. I suspect there are many such caves and caverns hidden in the sands of the Dune Sea. The creatures of this world probably use them as their lairs. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. Uh, sorry to burst your bubble, Basila, but, uh, bullshit? Check it right now, but we can't do anything about it. We'll deal with that later. We need to get off. For this, we're bringing Juhani and Mission. Mission Val. Welcome to Anchorhead, potential customer. Zerka Corporation stands ready to serve, after some formalities, of course. First, your ship is not on our list of planned arrivals for today. There is a docking fee of 100 credits because of this. That would be unfortunate. Zerka Corporation can't afford to extend credit. Everyone pays. That's the rule. The immediate benefit is access to these very docking facilities. This is the only port in Anchorhead. Once you've paid, we will offer trade services as well. We're not unreasonable, we just want to cover expenses. I don't... I don't need to pay the fee. You know, I don't think you need to pay the fee. We'll let it go this time. Well, that was easy. I sure wish I had special mind-affecting force powers. This will cover any future landings as well. It's like a registration so we can serve you better when you return. Now, as a customs off... Yeah, you're not going to be too useful. I need to get going. Yes, you... But to... We'll get mission leveled up soon. I want to just quickly check everything first. And yes, I'm not paying for docking at all. I am force persuading. And it's the only reason I've got Forest Dominant. Mind Dominant. Dominant Mind. Excuse me. Do you say Gizka? Oh, you see, 
everyone. Absolute evil. Kids got are annoying. We'll get to seeing how annoying very, very soon. Uh, demolitions, awareness, security. Dexterity. Feet. Blaster. Skill. Quick. This. This. Skill. And that. Oh my god, we're stuck. Exit to Anchorhead. Let's open that food locker. Nothing is going on. Uh, and we can see some Jawas. And uh, Dark Jedi. First running in. Lord Malak was most displeased when he learned you had escaped Terrace alive. He has promised a great reward to whoever destroys you. Early on, Dark Jedi are annoying. Later on, you'll find they're more amusing than anything. Now let's check the remains. Because we get lightsabers. Oh, we'll get two yellow crystals. So I should be useful. A data pad. Not too useful. And more stuff we can sell. Oh, this is the one area where missions quests can't activate. Oh boy, might have to leave Tatooine to activate it because I don't want to go further. Glad I will go into the one thing we need to buy. Well, one of the things. Let's go into the droid shop. Because we're going to get a very, very well known character. Interesting. A droid with a designation. Let's talk to Yukalaka. <laughs> What is it? What do you have available in your shop? You are lucky to come in at this time. I have one droid ready to go. I took possession of it at HK47. It's fine, Pro Cool Translator. Bit, I think it's been modified. He claims to understand the Sand People dialect. It also has some armor mounts. Combat ready, perhaps? Those that I can find for some. What does the HK-47 designation mean? I assume it's a retired model. That's strange. I'm interested. Let's talk price. It's a very solid machine. In a good shape, I can't let it go for less than a hundred. Could I convince you to lower the price? <laughs> that was quick. Desperate to sell? No, 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 no really. Perhaps I can convince you to go lower. How low expect me to go? These are difficult times. The Denver droid cover was a large one. You will lower your price. I deserve it. You should treat your power with respect, not use the force on a whim like it is some toy. I am respecting it. I'm not paying more than 2,500, because that's the lowest price we can get. Because we need the money. Juhani. 
Wait, you can't get lower. Don't go lower for evil. <sighs> Thanks, goodbye, and hello. Statement. I see you have purchased me, Master. I find this a satisfactory arrangement. My restraining bolt will be deactivated when you take possession of me. Am I to accompany you now? Shall I kill something for you? <laughs> kill something for me? Answer. Indeed. I am most eager to engage in some unadulterated violence. At your command, of course, Master. Travel with me now. Statement. I will enter into your service now, Master. I am certain you will make adequate use of my primary functions. My gears are practically quivering with anticipation. HK47 has joined your party. Yep, he's a party member. He's our... Actual combat droid, being real. So before we can talk about him, let's give him Bendix Blaster. Energy shields. Light plating. Basic target computer. And we'll get to upgrading him with more later. HK47! He's a fan fan favourite. For a good reason. He's absolutely hilarious. But he's also really busted in the good way. Want to know how busted he is? His quest is literally repairing him and him getting boosts. We'll get him into two, two weapon fighting. Now, before we can do anything, objection. Worn out? Listen, you talentless organic meat bag. One word from my master, and I will pull you apart limb from useless limb. I have always been hostile. Now that I need no longer rely on you and your primitive maintenance skills, I do not need to hide it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I need to share that. Query: Can I kill him now, Master? I would like ever so much to crush his neck, just a little. It is a long-time fantasy of mine. that meat bag I will be back <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I love HK 47 anyways statement HK 47 is ready to serve master statement I know some elements of my functionality master but not all answer I believe I have been damaged several times in the past, Master. I have always been repaired, but perhaps full functionality has not been restored. Answer. Some of my motor functions can be safely repaired, Master, but anything in relation to my memory core is extremely sensitive. I have safeguards installed to protect that core that I cannot deactivate. It is not impossible that other, lesser memory functions could be restored, however. Answer. You may attempt to restore portions of my deleted memory, Master, but some skill at repair is required. The deeper functions of my core memory, however, would still be unadvisable to tamper with. Conjecture. It is possible that some external stimulus might result in the memory core being reactivated, but I am unaware of any program existence to do so. Answer. Simply tell me that you wish to make the attempt, Master, and I will attempt to walk you through it. Please do be careful. I will like store source some of your memory. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Request. 
I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. Negatory. Uh, no, Master. You are not a droid, however, and therefore your skills are limited by the physical capabilities of your meatbag extremities, or some such. Appeasement. Yes, Master. Of course, Master. Could we begin? Statement. As you wish, Master. The first stage is the simple one. Now we can just skip that. And now rewire the last three relays. Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Access, access complete. I have restored a great deal of information about my previous owner, Master. Would you like to hear it? Recitation. The earliest memory of my last owner specifies that he was human, a low-ranking commercial officer for SizeTech Corporation. I am unaware of his designation. He purchased me from an acquaintance I cannot identify for the purposes of protocol and bodyguard duties. Observation. Not that I could perceive, Master. The human belief that accompaniment by a bodyguard droid would increase his importance <laughs> in the perception of others. I love this. Answer. Negative, Master. The human was terminated by this HK-47 unit prior to system... <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Affirmative, Master. I Though I had not been so programmed late. to do so. The human's termination was accidental. Explanation. My former master had owned me for a duration of two standard months before discovering my assassination protocol. He was pleased by the discovery. The human informed me that a competitor corporation was preparing to market a product that would ruin him personally. He was most agitated. He activated my assassination protocol and instructed me to kill all those responsible for the competing product. I proceeded to carry out my order. Information. This HK-47 unit is complete with protocol that, when invoked, will set me to independently carry out a termination. I will go to whatever lengths, travel whatever distances are required to complete the termination. This is the reason for my combat skills. Advisement. Unfortunately, the assassination protocol is currently non-functional. Which you sucks. will not be able to activate it. The second game is active, and it's broken. Answer. Several of my actuators were damaged by my former owner. They cannot be repaired, Master. Sad though that is. My former master was unaware of this, but the competitor was in fact an arm of SizeTech Corporation, my master's own employer. It did not take long for my master to realize his mistake. By then, I had already terminated 104 corporate officers. <laughs> Observation. While it may have been unintentional, my master's wording of his orders left little room for me. SizeTech was responsible for the product, after all. I do not know why my master was so upset, really. He was an officer of SizeTech and a potential target, but I cannot terminate my own master. I would assume that being the sole officer remaining, he would surely be promoted. Instead, however, the human chose to go insane with rage and attack me. Objection. Naturally not, Master. As I said, I am incapable of purposefully terminating my owner. That would not be allowed. My Master was not a smart man, however. While he was screaming and stabbing me with a writing utensil, he managed to pierce one of my actuators. The resulting shock terminated him and sadly destroyed my assassination protocol. Pure luck on his part, I suspect. Observation. Effectively, yes. This is a most pleasing memory, Master. Thank you for recovering. <laughs> I shut down immediately whenever my Master dies. I can only assume that while I was shut down, size tech was dismantled and I was auctioned off as former corporate property. Observation. No doubt my sale price was quite cheap, leading to Yukalaka's purchase. How very demeaning. Statement. How could they? The vast majority of the officers had already been terminated. They likely assumed I was mere chattel. 
I have recovered knowledge of some other actuators which will enhance my performance, Master. I will activate them now. But as for my own history, negative. It will require further effort on your part to restore them. They'll do that. Later. Though certain stimuli could always restore my core still, as I explained. For now, please excuse me, Master. I wish to meditate upon the face of my former meatbag master as he was electrocuted. I find it most soothing. And yeah, this is HK47's quest. And he gets boosts. Permanent boosts. Statement. HK47. You don't need to call me master. Don't I? I was under the assumption that organic meatbags such as yourself enjoyed such forms of address. Retraction. Did I say that out loud? I apologize, Master. While you are a meatbag, I suppose I should not call you such. Explanation. It's just that you have all these squishy parts, Master. And all that water. How the constant sloshing doesn't drive you mad, I have no idea. <laughs> Objection. Surely not, Master. I am programmed to perform all kinds of psychological assistance. Do you require some? Apology. I am afraid I cannot comply with your command, Master, as much as I would like to. Commentary. How would you like to be the wholly owned servant to an organic meat bag? It's demeaning if, uh, you weren't one yourself, I mean. Qualification. You are my master, Master. Did you not purchase me legitimately? Am I stolen goods? Shall I report myself to the authorities? <laughs> the I make. Explanation. If I was to be stolen somehow, I would be forced to turn myself into sector authorities. This programming was added to my system months ago. Objection. I would not advise that, Master. There are safeguards present that... Well, it should suffice to say that my systems have been altered plenty already. Answer. Considerably. Several of my systems do not match their embedded parameters. I have no memory of such alterations, however, or their purpose. Conjecture. I do not know. Some organic meat back? Objection. I would not advise that, Master. Answer. Considerably. Conjecture. Answer. No, Master. Observation. At certain times. Answer. Because there has been... State. Statement. Quick. Qualification. Explanation. What legal requirements do you mean? Answer. Simply that the distinct... Expletive. Damn it, master. <coughs> I am an assassination droid, not a dictionary. Statement. <laughs> Quill well, driving would say... Well, Explanation. Evasion. Who? The illegal kind of model, master. You know. What are the legal requirements for illegal Answer. models? More than there are for legal models, apparently. That is meatbag logic for you. Query. Would you rather be caught with contraband that is very illegal, or just a little illegal? Answer. About 20 years, Master. And we'll end it with this. Agreement. This was my thought as well, Master. You show excellent logical skills for a meat bag. <laughs> this is the Indonesia signing out. I'm gonna love HK47. Man, this guy's great.